Working with the virtual forest has helped me make this information more real to students. I can predict for them and then I can ask them to predict. I think contributing to a database like this helps kids really understand the real method of science. That helps them actually go through a bit of the scientific method, see how we design the experiment, and actually go out and collect data themselves. This terminology, anyway, hey, let's make a virtual forest, what was the idea to say, why don't we use all the data and projects that we have that we've been collecting over the years and turn that into a virtual experience that we can use both for the people who can't visit the forest and for our students as preparation before we take them to the forest. Today we use the Paleo module as a um, part of one day of the five day uh, science class. At the beginning of the week they learned many, many of the plants all categories, trees, shrubs, and herbs. And then today when we used the paleo module, when they saw the pollen grains and the names of the pollen grains, they were able to make an immediate connection to the plants that they had seen all week. What was your favorite tree? Black birch. Black birch? So one question led to other questions. They were digging deeper into the simulation, and I think they had a good experience doing that. One of the first interesting examples from the virtual forest was when we put a gauge on one of our main streams, the Cascade Brook watershed, and we could sense for the first time how much water was flowing out of the forest and what its parameters were. And we could see things in real time that we hadn't been able to track before. When the snow melts in the springtime, there can be a flush of acid that moves quickly past the sensor station. If you're not sampling at the right time, you don't know about that. You begin to understand better the ecology of the stream and the things that are really important for the organisms. Giving teachers and students access to those data sets is, is very useful. Teachers tell me all the time how, how much they like to have these real data sets to do analysis. With a lot of little bumps going up during the summer and then coming back down in the winter time. It very well, uh, I think, integrates math and statistics and other areas, computer science, into some of the classroom things that they're able to do. I teach three different grades of introductory marine science, intermediate marine science, and advanced marine science. So the way that I introduce the material to the students is virtually. Your objectives are you're going to predict changes in the water temperature of a stream. You're also going to use an online graphing tool to create a temperature graph of a stream using actual historical data. I have the students learn techniques of water quality measurement and the importance of those parameters in the classroom, in the lab first. And the virtual lab is a powerful tool because it, it helps the kids realize the larger world while they're sitting down. Black Rock Forest is an amazing learning resource for students grades K through 12 and beyond. Our seventh graders are studying ecology at the moment. They are looking at historical measurements of air temperature, water temperature, soil measurements, and then eager themselves to go out and take the same measurements here in New York City. And the Virtual Forest website gives us the ability to extend those learning resources to make it so that we can easily access them in the classroom or anywhere in the world. In 2009, I collected about a year's worth of data with my high school students, water quality data. We incorporated that year's worth of data into the Black Rock Forest database. The idea was to give the kids some kind of interface where they could obtain the data anywhere in any school use some basic rudimentary statistics to, um, to get some results and, and help them analyze the changes that were going on in the uh, Harlem River with water bodies in Black Rock Forest. We're creating a new virtual forest module based on mammals. And really the goal is to find the distribution of mammals, the various habitats they live in, by having students and teachers use live trapping and release to find and survey the forest in terms of its mammal population from shrews, very small mammals, to very large mammals like coyotes. And the students do this by randomly sampling based on a map of the forest that was created in the virtual forest module. Some data are collected and animals are released. Every group of students and teachers contributes a little more. And so over time, we'll have this collective sample that will give a pretty good picture of where their mammals are in this, in this large forest.
We've been working on the effects of temperature on respiration, the effects of light and CO2 on photosynthesis, and the effects of nitrogen deposition on the growth and physiology of the various forest trees. The module that I'm most familiar with is called the Forest Tree Respiration Module, and I use it extensively in two classes that I teach. I try and convey this idea that if we understand small-scale physiological responses to environmental variation, we can understand large-scale uh, plant distributions on the planet. The Tree Respiration Module is a great tool um, because it allows students who come to Black Rock Forest to actually collect data for senior thesis projects, feed this data into the module, and allow other students to learn from that data. I think as people doing research, we are really interested in how to scale up from plot level um, dynamics to the canopy and to landscapes. And this module allows you to do that without having to go out and take painstaking data, but you're using real data. I have learned so much by exploring the site uh, reading about the descriptions, engaging in the data analysis myself. It's made me a better teacher to have been able to use the virtual forest.